This is an original book in my collection of old books, which was published in 1806. It was a gift from a friend of mine, and I'm going to show it to you as part of the Jane Aston Ball from Drunk Austin on Facebook. As you can see, the title on the cover is no longer visible. And yes, I'm not wearing gloves. Here's the inscription. the page. So we have the preface. I'm not going to read the preface to you, but I will read one of the poems. Here's one of the poems in the book from 1806 called The Widow to Her Hourglass. Come, friend, I'll turn thee up again, companion of the lonely hour. Spring thirty times hath fed with rain, and clothed with leaves my humble bower, since thou hast stood in frame of wood in on chest or window by my side. At every birth still thou wert near, still spoke thine admonitions clear, and when my husband died, I've often watched thy streaming sand, and seen the growing mountain rise, and often found life's hopes to stand on props as weak in wisdom's eyes. Its conic crown still sliding down, and again heaped up, then down again. The sand above more hollow grew, like days and years still filtering through and mingling joy and pain. While thus I spin and sometimes sing, for now and then my heart will glow, Thou measurest time's expanding wing, by thee the noontide hour I know. Though silent thou, still shalt thou flow, and jog along thy destined way. But when I glean the sultry fields, when earth her yellow harvest yields, thou gettest a holiday. Steady as truth, on either end, thy daily task performing well. Thou art meditation's constant friend, and strikes the heart without a bell. Come, lovely May, thy lengthened day shall gild once more my native plain. Curl inward here, sweet woodbine flower, companion of the lonely hour, I'll turn thee up again. A Word to Two Young Ladies When tender rose trees first receive on half-expanded leaves the shower, hope's gayest pictures we believe, and anxious watch each coming flower. Then, if beneath the genial sun that spreads abroad the full-blown May, two infant stems the rest outrun, their buds the first to meet the day. With joy their opening tent tints we view, while morning's precious moments fly. My pretty maids, tis thus with you, the fond admiring gazer, I. Preserve, sweet buds, where'er you be, the richest gem that decks a wife, the charm of female modesty, and let sweet music give its life. Still may the favoring muse be found, still circumspect the paths we tread, plant moral truths in fancy's ground, and meet old age without a dread. Yet, ere that comes, while yet ye quaff the cup of, cup of health without a pain, I'll shake my gray hairs when you laugh, and when you sing, be young again.
Nancy, a song. You ask me, dear Nancy, what makes me presume that you cherish a secret affection for me. When we see the flowers, but don't we look for the bloom? Then, sweetest, attend while I answer to thee. When we young men with pastimes the twilight beguile, I watch your plump cheek till it dimples with joy, and observe that whatever occasions the smile, you give me a glance, but provokingly coy. Last month, when wild strawberries plucked in the grove like beads on the tall seeded grass you had strung, you gave me the choicest. I hoped it was for love, and I told you my hopes while the nightingale sung. Remember the viper, twas close at your feet, how you started and threw yourself into my arms. Not a strawberry there was so ripe nor so sweet as the lips which I kissed to subdue your alarms. As I pulled down the clusters of nuts from my fare, what a blow I received from a strong bending bough. Though Lucy and other gay lasses were there, not one of them showed such compassion as you. And was it compassion? By heaven, t'was more. A tell-tale betrays you that blush on your cheek. Then come, dearest maid, all your trifling give o'er, and whisper what candor will teach you to speak. Can you stain my fair honor with one broken vow? Can you say that I've ever occasioned a pain? On truth's honest base, let your tenderness grow. I swear to be faithful again and again. Lucy, a song. Thy favorite bird is soaring still, my Lucy, haste thee o'er the dale. The streams let loose, and from the mill, and silent comes the balmy gale, yet so lightly on its way, seems to whisper holiday. The pathway flowers that bending meet, and give the meads their yellow hue, the maybush and the meadow sweet reserve their fragrance all for you. Why then, Lucy, why delay? Let us share the holiday. Since there thy smiles, my charming maid, are with unfeigned rapture seen, to beauty be the homage paid, come claim the triumph of the green, here's my hand, come, come away, share the merry holiday. A promise too, my Lucy made, and shall my heart its claims resign, that ere Mayflowers again should fade, her heart and hand should both be mine. Hark ye, Lucy, this is May, love shall crown our holiday.